Maysoon, are you with us? Yes, I am. There you are. You're, uh, you're controlling people wouldn't let me be on video before you announce me, but <laughs> I've been here for a while. I met Athena actually when I was teaching at Arizona State University. So yay, she was still running back then. I'm happy to see she won. So <laughs> like you, she is awesome. Um, thank you so much for everything that you've been doing and specifically around this campaign. So let me start by asking you why it's been so important to you to be so engaged as an Arab American woman on this campaign. Well, I mean, because Donald Trump's going to kill us all. That's why it has very little to do with being Arab and just has a lot to do with being human. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I have cerebral palsy, uh, which manifests itself in my case with the fact that I shake all the time. And I think that the current administration is absolutely lethal to the disabled community. And I think that when people think of disability, they only think of health care. But that's not the reality for a lot of disabled Americans. Our rights are under siege on every level. For example, Betsy DeVos, who I like to call Cruella DeVos, rolled back 72 protections for students with disabilities. Um, when you cut SNAP, people with disabilities are disproportionately affected because um, we tend to live in poverty more than our non-disabled peers. And 50% of all people killed by law enforcement are disabled. I think that four more years of this administration would lead to so many more disabled deaths. And the reason that I say more is, this six months has been really hard for disabled Americans. It's been really torture because we have heard this administration over and over discount the value of our lives by saying things like, don't worry, the only people that COVID is killing when we do a super spreader rally in Tulsa or in New Hampshire or in whatever other place we've decided to in fact, we're just killing old people and disabled people. Disabled people hear that. We hear that every single day. And I think that the Biden-Harris administration will genuinely protect us. I think that Joe experienced firsthand what it was like to have a disabled child, what it's like to deal with mental health in your family as an issue, what it's like to lose a child to cancer, and that they are going to protect this community. One is in three families has a disabled member. So I think it's an issue that matters to all of us. As a Muslim, as a woman of color, and as a woman, this matters to me because I think it's amazing that we have a woman of color on the ticket. I know that Kamala is not a Muslim, but she's brown. I, I feel like I could play her Maya Rudolph, didn't, didn't want to. And I, it's really fun for me to have a woman who didn't birth a baby in a power position, because I'm an infertile myrtle, and I don't have kids either. And she's showing us that like, you don't have to birth a baby to be a mom. You don't have to be a birthing baby to be a good leader. And finally, as a woman, I find it very disturbing that we have a man in the White House that gawked at a 10 year old going up an escalator and said he would date her. That has talked about dating his own child that has been credibly accused of sexual assault by dozens and dozens of women. The message that sends to me as a Muslim American, as an Arab American, as just an American, is that women have no value in this administration. Women have no worth. Joe Biden trailblazed the legislation that challenged violence against women. Whereas violence against women seems to be a prerequisite if you want to work in the Trump administration. My soon, these are um, incredibly difficult things to hear, but, but true. Um, the, the lack of value placed on human life from this administration is, has been um, stark. I want to ask them, you... Tell them that I'm funny and I'm not always this heavy. And <laughs> after they make their voting... Well, this, is, this is where I was going to go with this. Is you, yeah. you've, you've said <laughs> that you didn't always know you were funny, which is hard to believe. Yeah. Uh, but that you always knew you were a storyteller, right? What, what do you think is the story of this particular campaign? I think the story of this campaign is Star Wars. It's good 
versus evil. And unfortunately, our RBG, our Yoda, has gone to God. And therefore, it's time for us to continue the battle. I think it's a, it's a war between good and evil. It's a war between light and dark, between hate and love, between bigotry and equality, between pro progress and regress. It's, it's straight up Star Wars, you know? And, and Joe is, is our Obi-Wan Kenobi. And, and uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, Don LeCon is the darkest of Sith Lords. And it's, it's really a battle for the soul of this nation. And I know that this is a hard conversation to have with Arabs. I know that Arab Americans are disappointed. I know that Obama, we had so much hope for him. He hung out with, you know, Rashid Khalidi and we thought this was the person who was gonna fight for Palestinian equality and we were disappointed. I have so much hope in this administration because they listen, they listen. I know Athena mentioned this, but like, I was really worried about the Palestine platform. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that the Palestine platform says no to annexation, it says no to settlement building, it said yes to equality. It lists Palestinians as having a right to equality. I've never seen that in any statement. Is it everything that we want? No. Is this an administration that will listen to us? Yes. And, you know, I'm not even kidding when I say this. I think that if Trump crime family is given another four years, that he will gift anything that's left of Palestine to Ivanka for her wedding anniversary. I think it's very, very dangerous. And like, you know, the oppression of Palestinians is horrible. Trust me, having a Queen Ivanka would be so much worse. <laughs> you are funny. You can even make us laugh about this topic. I, I do think, um, I really want to emphasize this point you're making. I, I am, um, um, I have voted in many elections and I've never been able to vote, frankly, my conscience when it comes to the issue of Palestinian human rights. I wish that I could have, but it hasn't really happened. Um, but you make the point essential here, which is that while not perfect and while not understanding these issues and, and uh, framing them the way we want to see, they are listening and that this is a, an administration that will be engaged with Arab Americans, that values Arab Americans and understands the role that we can play. Uh, and I think that's a key point of this conversation for everybody that's struggling with that piece of it. Uh, I think keeping that in mind is important. And I think it's important to remember that they don't always get everything right, but they always listen. They yeah. literally always listen. Like anytime I've heard something, I'm like, ee, that's, that's, ah. and you reach out. This is an administration that really does want to do the right thing. They really are guided by the fact that a right equals prosperity. Um, and so you, when you talk about these, part of the, the challenge is really drawing this between, I mean, you said, right, it's good and evil. We rarely speak in terms that are this black and white, but this election really is. It is the stark contrast between what needs to happen. How do you talk to family members and other Arab Americans about the importance of making sure that they have not lost hope, <laughs> that they know there's, they can act uh, between now and November 3rd. I made the point already that elections are already underway in many communities, but what is your pitch to folks to, to be engaged? I threaten to disown them and have them banned from all my comedy and all my funny making if they do not vote for the um, Biden-Harris. Um, what I do is I sit them down and I, again, talk about good and evil because a lot of people like to talk about the lesser of two evils and a lot of people like to talk about their vote not counting. So when they talk about their vote not counting, I remind them that just the Arabs at my cousin's wedding in Orlando, just them, nobody else, just those Arabs at my cousin's wedding in the before time could swing the Florida vote and win it for Joe Biden. We know they can swing Michigan, but I think we downplay the fact that we are all over Ohio, that we are in Pennsylvania, that we are in Florida, that we have the ability to be a swing vote, to be a force to be reckoned with, to decide who the next leaders are and have leaders listen to us. And when people say it's the difference between good and evil, I say is saving lives good. Mm -hmm. If you think saving lives is good, then you're not voting for the lesser of two evils, you're voting for good. 200,000 people have died 
so many more will if we are stripped of healthcare. Um, the temperament of this, this predator in the grifter in the White House, I don't trust his, his temperament. I'm still afraid that the October surprise could result in a million deaths somewhere he decides to nuke worldwide. I think that when you talk to people, you have to just be like, straight up, our lives depend on this. If you have a value for me as a friend, you cannot support and empower someone who puts my life in danger. Uh, Maya knows this. Every time he starts chanting, send her back and gets cult 45 to chant things about Ilhan or Rashida or AOC, people like me are also threatened. People get stabbed on subways. People get shot for their color or what their perceived faith is. We need to turn down the temperature and turn up the equality. And if you look at the Biden-Harris ticket, it looks like America. We need Joe to be our white savior. I've never wanted a white savior, but Joe is it. And like, I met him, right? And uh, my mom was so mad at me because I'm her constant date to weddings. And I ditched her to go to an event with Dr. Jill and Joe. And Joe Biden called my mom so that she wouldn't be mad at me. You gotta and, love that. <laughs> yeah. You gotta he, love so that. my mom has Joe's number. It's cool. And he called her and he said to her, she said, you know, I'm just so disappointed. We went from this amazing four people, this family that really cared for us, to this, this travesty, un-American mess, impeached person. And, and Joe Biden said, you have to have faith. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. And my mother is a negative Nancy. And she believed him. She <laughs> believed him. And as I watch him, I believe him too, because I think that Joe does want what's best. I, I, I know that's shallow and that politicians are all smarmy. I've met the dude. He seriously wants us to thrive. He wants the climate to survive. He wants he a great to place yeah. for the grandkids. And, and I, I think you convince people to vote by threatening not to give them Christmas gifts, not to you know, answer their Zoom calls, block them. If you must take their pet for an extended walk, that's too much. Don't do stuff like that. My soon, thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for your incredible presence and thank you for your- And Maya, can I just say one last thing? Yes. Please look out for the disabled voters in your family. Help them make a voting plan. Do they need to be, look at this one. Do they need to be taken to the polls? Do they need you, you know, to, to be the assistant? There is a place on a live ballots where you can help people who need help That's filling right. out a ballot help the people in your life vote if they are illiterate if they are not english speakers if they are disabled get auntie to vote for the first time if she's an american citizen she never voted it doesn't matter she can vote please make a voting plan so we can win in numbers so big they never ignore this community again i love it thank bye you. don thank you thank you thank you <laughs>